Today, your I can statement says, I will use lines to draw a spider web and shape to create a spider. Let's take a look at these awesome examples that students made. I will use lines to draw a spider web. If you look at the example of the spider web, you can find many different types of lines. You could find vertical lines, horizontal lines, diagonal lines, curved lines, dotted lines, parallel lines, and even diagonals. Let's see how many different lines you can create in your web. Today, we will be using different types of lines to draw our spider webs. We will be using straight lines, vertical lines that stand straight up and down, horizontal lines that lay flat on their side, diagonal lines going both directions, curved lines going both directions, and we may even use two diagonal lines to make an X. We will also be using dots. To begin drawing on our spider web, you'll need your painting either of your cool colors or of your warm colors. Next, we're gonna find the middle of our paper. And in the middle of our paper, before we start the lines, we're going to be drawing one shape. The shape that we're going to draw is a pentagon. A pentagon has five different sides. The easiest way to draw a pentagon is to start with an A shape or the top of a triangle, then draw the bottom line and connect the two pieces on the sides. So to start with, get a pencil and right in the middle, we're going to draw that A shape or the pentagon. The bottom is flat and then two diagonal lines. The reason we're gonna start this with pencil is because you might need to restart this little part. If you're happy with your pentagon shape, you're going to get a white oil pastel and trace over the top. We'll be putting our spider here later. The next thing that we're going to do is find the points on our pentagon. And I'm going to put tiny circles on each of the points. From here, I'm going to draw, draw a straight line up or a vertical line that's standing nice and tall all the way to the edge of my paper. Next, I'm going to use the point that's on the right hand side and I'm going to be bringing a line straight out. And I'm gonna to wait to stop until I touch the edge of my paper. I'm going to do that same thing across on the other side. And go all the way and touch the side. Then at the bottom of your pentagon, at the two circles, we're going to do a diagonal that comes out and touches the edge of your paper. And same on the other side. Now we've used a vertical line, two horizontal lines, and two diagonal lines. We're going to continue building on our spider web a little bit at a time. Next, I'm going to repeat the pentagon shape a little bit further out. So here I see a diagonal, so I'm gonna bring a diagonal up. Here's another diagonal, so I'm gonna bring this line up and attach it to the top web. And I'm going to keep going all the way around, repeating the line. 
to create the first section of my spider web. Now inside each one of these sections, I'm going to try to make my spider web look a little bit like it did in the book. So I'm going to use some diagonal lines here and another diagonal here. And then I'm gonna to move to the next section. In this section, I'd like something different. So this time I'm going to do two lines that are close together. And now I'm going to try to use the arch or the rainbow line and create some arches. Now, if on your web you need to add an extra one or have one less arch, that's okay. I think I'm going to repeat some arches up here too. When an artist repeats a pattern, that is a strong design. Next, I'm going to move over here and try some diagonal lines again. I think I'll repeat some more diagonal lines coming over. And now I'm going to work on the two up here. This time, I'm going to put a diagonal this direction and then create a zigzag line. Ooh, I like that zigzag. Let's add another one. Make sure your lines connect. As you continue on with your web, think about all of the different lines and how we can make a web look interesting. You could go back and add more lines, or you might leave some of those sections open. Now let's move on to the second section of our web. We're gonna repeat those same lines again. And this time, my oil pastel will stop once it touches the edge of the page. Now for the next section of web, I want to try something different, something that I haven't done yet. So perhaps in this one, I'll do some straight lines. This almost reminds me of the letter H. I think I'll repeat that and do one more of those. So I'm using vertical lines and horizontal lines. Now this section, maybe I'll repeat again up here, or maybe I'll change it and do something different. I think I'm gonna repeat those double lines, but I think I'm gonna do a zigzag, or you can think of this one as the letter V that was tipped over on its side. And I'll repeat over on this side with the letter V that got tipped over. And I think I'm gonna add some more lines here just to make my web look more interesting. This time I'm gonna use curvy lines. And I think I'll repeat that up here again. And now I have another section. And I think in this section, I'm going to use another shape. I think I'll try to do a diamond shape with some straight lines. So it almost looks like a square this way or a diamond shape this way. I think I'm going to repeat that on the other side. And now I have some open spaces here, and I think I'm going to just repeat a couple of tight lines together. So I have four lines here. So I'll try to do four lines here. So as you're working on your web, it's okay to change your lines. They can look different from mine, but go slowly and think about the pattern that you're creating when you're drawing the web. 
I've got a little bit more to do for my web. I think I'm gonna add a line that comes out here and here. This will help so that my spider can connect these webs to something. If you have a spot that looks a little bit empty, go back, add some extra lines. Think about the variety of lines that you already know how to create. And now your last step or detail for your spider web is to go back and to create small circles where two lines meet up. You don't have to do every single dot in every single place, but by creating these tiny dots, it'll look a little bit more like the example that we saw in the book. I will use shapes to cut and decorate my spider. The spider's body is an oval or a teardrop shape for the head, a triangle for the body, and then on the face of the spider, there are rectangles, circles, and triangles. Shapes are flat, two-dimensional shapes that have a length, and a width. To create the spider, we will be using a few more shapes. So the first shape we'll be using for the spider's head is a teardrop shape. This is an upside down teardrop shape. For the body, we will be using a triangle. And for the legs, we will be using two different sections of rectangles. On the face, we will be using rectangles and we'll be able to color these in with different colors. There's also a rectangle that goes this direction down the nose. Then we'll be adding triangles and circles for the eyes. And for the mouth, and the nose, a few more shapes. Then we'll be putting the head on top of the triangle body so we'll overlap. So the triangle body will come down this direction. And finally, spiders have eight legs. So we'll be using those rectangle shapes to create eight legs on each side of the spider. To make the spider's body, we will use the two tracers and trace them on black paper. You can use your white oil pastel white crayon or a pencil. After you're done carefully tracing the triangle, pass the triangle to somebody else to use and then you can start tracing the teardrop shape. And again, share the shape tracers with somebody else at your table. Next, you're going to get a scissors and slowly and carefully cut and stay on the lines. Remember, we don't wanna do fast, choppy cutting. Slow cutting is always best because it will be neater. Okay. 
walk your scraps of paper to the recycling bin and your teacher will collect the tracers to use again. Next, we need to glue down the body and the head. We wanna make sure that we put the glue on the side that has the tracing lines. This is the back side, it's not as nice as the front side, and we'd like the front side showing for your spider. When you put the spider's body together, remember that you still will have legs on your body. So keep that in mind when you're gluing down the triangle. You're gonna use a little bit of glue with the glue and the paintbrush to glue this down. And then next you will glue the head down and that will go right here. Finally, you're gonna glue down the two pieces for the legs. And there are four legs on each side. A spider has a total of eight legs. When you start creating the spider legs, you'll get a long strip of paper. The legs on the outside are the longest and the ones closer to the point are the shortest. So when you put your strip down, measure to see where you will need to cut your legs. So I'm gonna put my first cut here and then I'm going to take the same strip and rotate it. And when I have about the right length, Instead of cutting it straight across, I'm gonna try to cut it at a diagonal. And when you snip it at a diagonal, it almost looks like the spider is climbing along a little bit more. When you glue it, it's important to see if you can tuck this little piece underneath. If you can't, that's okay too, but it has to be touching the body, so it needs to be connected. If you can slide it underneath, and then check to see which angle you want the spider leg to be at and glue it down. And then the second part of the leg will also be connected. Now this one over here is at a diagonal. If I want that to be the same before it dries, I would just turn or rotate the leg and then put on the second piece. And remember that diagonal cut that we just did? I'm gonna try to see if I can make that diagonal come down and point here. And again, I'm making sure that these two are lined up. I'm gonna grab this long pointy strip again. And now I'm starting my second leg. So I'm gonna just place it on and measure it. It looks like maybe about here would be the right place to cut. And I can glue this one down. And now I'm ready for the next part. And if I'm measuring, it looks like somewhere in here, I'm gonna to try to cut at a diagonal. And add a little bit of glue on. Double check that your points are connecting. And then we're gonna continue on with the strip. Remember, each leg that gets closer to the body is going to get a little bit shorter. So I'll measure and cut. measure and cut, try to cut at a diagonal. I'm gonna do the diagonal the other direction this time. Remember, I don't want it sticking up. I'm gonna to try to move it so that it's lining up. I've got one more to go. If you run out of paper, if you don't quite have enough, just come and get a second piece. And I'm gonna measure and cut. Try to tuck it under. And I'm checking to see how it looks compared to the other leg. And finally, the last bit of the leg. Now when I put this one on, if I'm looking, maybe this one seems too long, that's okay. I'll just fix it by cutting it a little bit shorter and finishing the gluing part. The last step we're going to do is adding on a face to the spider and we will use some color to do that in the face. 
Anansi has some more shapes on the face. So at the top of the head, there are some straight lines or rectangles. So we'll use our colors to create the top band across the forehead. And you can use more than one color if you'd like. So these are straight lines or shaped like rectangles. down the middle of the nose, pretty far down, but we have to save some room for the mouth, is another rectangle. And I'm creating some vertical lines, and now it's starting to look like a rectangle. Next, I need circles for eyes and triangles for the shape above the eye. And when I color in, I'm gonna color in nice and neat, getting rid of all of the black underneath that shape. And here's the circle for the eye and filling in the circle. On some of the spider drawings, there's a tiny circle next to the nose. You can add that on or leave it off. And then we have the mouth. And the mouth is an upside down triangle. On some of the pages in the book, it was a circle. And I'm going to color this in solid. And those of you that want to add on the second bonus part of the mouth, it's a letter V with another line coming down. If you'd like to decorate a tiny bit more, you could do a few more shapes along the body. I can't wait to see how you decided to decorate your spider and which lines you used in the background and which shapes you used to create the face.